Chapter 26, Isabel. Somewhere on the Straits of Florida, 1994, two days from home. Rain lashed Isabel as she shoveled water out of the boat. Scoop, pitch, scoop, pitch. The bottom of the boat filled as fast as they could bail it out. Isabel and her mother, her grandfather, her father, Luis, Ivan, Senor Costello, they all worked feverishly, none of them talking, not that they could hear each other over the storm anyway. The only ones not bailing were Senor Costello, who looked like a ghost, and Amara, who clung to the rudder with white-knuckled hands and tried to keep the boat turned into the churning wave so it wouldn't capsize. The engine hadn't worked since their escape from the tanker. The storm clouds turned the day into night, and the driving rain soaked Isabel to the bone. She shivered in the cold wind, her feet numb in the water, sloshing at the bottom of the boat. Sea spray stung her eyes, and in between scoops of water, she dragged her arm across her face, trying to wipe away the saltwater tears. As she watched the surging waves, Isabel remembered the last time she had seen her grandma. She remembered Lita's hand reaching out for help as the tide swept her away. Isabel had been nine years old. Her parents had sent her to stay with Lito and Lita in their little shack on the coast. They hadn't said why, but Isabel was old enough to know her parents had been fighting again, and they wanted to be alone while they worked things out. All that spring, Isabel had waited without joy in the ocean, waited for the storm to come that would tear her family apart. And then the real storm had come. It wasn't a hurricane. It was bigger than a hurricane, a gigantic cyclone that stretched from Canada down through the United States and across Cuba and into Central America. Later they would call it the storm of the century, but to Isabel it was the storm. The shrinking wind ripped roofs off houses and pulled palm trees straight out of the ground. The rain fell sideways. Hell shattered windows like never-ending shotgun blast. And the ocean, the ocean rose up like a giant hand and reached inland over Lido and Lita's little house by the sea, smothering the house in its giant paw and dragging the shattered pieces back into its lair. Lido and Lita hadn't known the storm was coming or they wouldn't have been there. They were, had been inland, found higher ground. Castro had promised he would protect them, but he didn't. Not then, not Isabel's grandmother. Lito had been there to hold on to Isabel, but Lita had been swept away. She had slept under the waves, her arms still reaching for Lito, for Isabel, and that was the last time they'd ever seen her. Lito's arm found Isabel again now and wrapped her in a hug. I know what you're thinking, he said, close to her ear, where she could hear him. I'm thinking about it, too. I miss her, Isabel told her grandfather. I miss her, too, Lito said, every day. Real tears came into Isabel's eyes now, and Lito hugged her tightly. N that was her song's end, Lito whispered, but ours plays. Come, keep bailing, or soon it'll be up to our eyeballs. Isabel nodded and went back to scooping water. What if her life was a song? No, not a song. A life was a symphony, with different movements and complicated musical forms. A song was something shorter, a smaller piece of life. This journey was a song, Isabel realized, and each part of it was a verse. The first verse had been the riot, a blast of trumpets, the rat-a-tat-tat of a snare drum, then the pre-chorus of trading her trumpet for gasoline, the piano that gave the sons its rhythm, and then the chorus itself, leaving home. They were still leaving home, still hadn't gotten to where they were going. They would re turned to the chorus again and again before they were done. But what was the refrain, and how many verses would there be before they got to the climax of the song, that brash moment at the end that echoed the refrain and then the coda, those brief few notes that all tied it all together? She couldn't think about that now. All she could do now was scoop water. Scoop water and pray they didn't drown in the mad conga solo that drum drummed against the side of their tiny metal boat.